Uh, welcome to 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, corona disease. That's the subject of the day. Um, and then before we start um, our subject, we are going to do a meditation as always and uh, to get centered and to come back to the truth of who we are and then after this 15-minute meditation, uh, I will talk about the subject of the day. Uh, those of you who are new with me and are connecting with me through our system, Zoom, um, you're welcome to write to me on the chat box or wave your hand and uh, then um, we'll go from there. And then I unmute you and we can talk to each other directly. Those, those of you who are connecting with me through uh, Instagram or what uh, or Facebook just um, know that it's difficult for me to deal with three different devices and I can't really answer your questions so if you want to connect with me directly come come on zoom and uh, through via my academy zaratustra.tv you can go through my website sign up at the academy and then we'll send you a link and you're able to participate directly. Um, for the moment, we're going to do a uh, meditation. This meditation is going to bring light within ourselves, and it's going to bring us into our etheric light body. So what we're going to do, it's again, it's very, very simple. Most meditations that I teach, um, they don't require any kind of prior training and everything is designed in turning our attention inwards towards the truth of who we are to recognize our divine self and to recognize the part of ourselves which is still, it's still and it's silent, it's quiet. So just turn your attention inwards. Bring your attention towards the source of yourself. Bring your attention to this place within yourself before thoughts arise. What's there before you think? And just simply revert your attention in that place without an effort, without really trying hard to make it happen. Come to this place within yourself, deep beyond the thinking mind, where before thoughts arise, Before any thought arises, what's there? There's a pool of silence. It's quiet, it's still, and nothing is going on at this place. And then at this place, I would like you to use the power of your imagination and turn this ocean, this pool, this ocean of silence and stillness into an ocean of light, pure light. All you see is an ocean of light. Golden light is all there is and there's nothing else. It's your awareness. It's the eye that is seeing 
The seer is seeing an ocean of light, is feeling the presence of light, golden light. Now you now we're going to take a deep breath. As you take a deep breath, you inhale and you exhale. Comes out of this ocean of light, manifests. It's the birth of a physical body of you in a form of light. Now you can see yourself that you're shining, light is pouring out of you, and your physical body is made out of light. There's no density, it's just pure light that you're seeing. And as you're breathing in and out, the light begins to expand as if you have a very, very, your, your aura begins to grow and you have a very, very large aura. And it's pure golden light. And it slowly, slowly starts to grow bigger and bigger. As your auric field is growing, this light, anything that it touches, transforms, transforms it to light. So your auric field is getting larger, it touches the space in the space that is growing. If there is any kind of darkness, the darkness turns to light. If there's any kind of disease, virus, microbe, it all change, transform to light. Any negative forces, they change to light. Anyone sending any negative intentions towards you, it changed to light, golden light. It transforms everything. And all this time, you are the source of this light. And it's growing, and it's vibrating. And this light has the power and carries the ancient codes, light codes. Of transformation of fear, anxiety, worry, ignorance into freedom, love expansion and wisdom. So it's transforming and rewriting old programs. And the light is, which is your auric field, it's coming from you it's starting to expand further and further, taking over an entire city that you live in, an entire region that you are in, and it keeps growing and transforming everything from vegetation, from animals, from water, air, the buildings, anything that touches, 
it transforms it. It carries the codes of love, acceptance, brotherhood, sisterhood, cooperation, caring, happiness, and wisdom. Compassion, understanding, sharing, willingness, positivity. As you are in the center of yourself, comfortably sitting in deep meditation, connecting to the wisdom which has been ingrained within yourself, the wisdom that you have carried throughout the ages the wisdom that reveals itself to you when you're in deep meditation you're quiet and you are not engaged with the world and its concerns you simply go deep inside yourself. This information begins to reveal itself to you. And it reminds you of the truth of who you are. It reminds you of your power that you've been and you are the divine being capable of transmitting pure wisdom and light and love from the center of yourself transferring it to the entire universe. From just sitting at one point, wherever you are, you have this power to connect with every living being. capable of transformation, transmuting, giving transmission of an ancient wisdom. And this wisdom all comes back into the oneness, the unity that there are no separations. It's all one, and it's all different aspects of the oneness, different impressions, 
different expression of that which is always here and that which is infinite and has the ability to present itself as different forms, different shapes. And there's nothing to be afraid of when you realize that you're always looking at a mirror of yourself. You're in a deep state of meditation. You're silent, quiet, comfortable, happy, protected, in full trust and surrender to the universal laws the universal intelligence the wisdom and in complete trust that all is well Everything is exactly where it needs to be. Nothing to worry about. Creation is in good hands. A creator is taking care of it. You can relax in this moment in the center of yourself and allow the transmission of light take place from within to without, to outside, other world.
when you're in a deep state of silence, you find yourself in the center of universe. Everything is still, quiet, and you come to this knowing that all is well, because you're in the center. You're in the center of the cyclone. There may be craziness outside happening, but not where you're at because you have found and discovered the center of yourself. From this place, from this place of deep silence, enormous amount of wisdom intelligence becomes available to you. Most importantly, a deep knowing that you're in very good hands, nothing to fear or worry about. When you come to this place, you recognize that because there is no mind Thoughts do not exist in this place. And this place is not ruled by emotions. It's pure wisdom. It's pure knowing. Slowly, slowly, your consciousness, your attention comes back to your physical form. You consciously, from a non-dual state from a place that you're completely expanded into light. 
you are trans transitioning back into a physical form. And in this transition, see yourself that you're not leaving anything behind. This wisdom and this knowing of your state of presence, of complete oneness, total wisdom, carrying all this intelligence, having access to universal intelligence, is transmuted into a singularity of a person. You're bringing it back into your idea and your vision of you are a person, a human being, wherever you are, you bring this back into a different state of consciousness, which is being awake, bringing that back here. And it's very good to see this transition of how you are capable of going in such a deep place to the center of yourself and being completely expanded, quiet and away from everything, and then coming back, still maintaining the silence, still maintaining your wisdom, and shifting the attention, and then you become a human being again, but you're a different human being this time. You can't be the same one before this meditation. You have discovered inner peace, inner silence, and you've discovered that you're beyond the limitations of the mind. And that's a part of this work is to show to you, for you to figure this out, to recognize and to understand this for yourself. Of the truth of who you are, when you're able to go beyond your thinking mind, when you're able to expand yourself beyond your emotional ups and downs and your attachment to the physical body and the attachment to the idea of what you feel or the idea that you are your feelings, you are your thoughts or you're the meat. And expanding into your infinite self And the more we do this, the more we start to see and it becomes easier and the more it helps us to go beyond the fear and worry and anxiety. Once you find this way, once you practice this, once you recognize this, you begin to see that how easy it is 
to tap into your higher self without any stories, without any acquiring any extra knowledge, any extra concepts. In fact, it's much easier that we don't try to pile up more information over information in our minds. Because the information that we're piling up, it should be used as a way of pointing out to this place. But this place is not really explainable and the mind can't understand expansion. The mind can't understand what does it mean to be one with everything can't understand it. So when we're studying and reading and taking dif different kind of courses or whatever we're doing, quite often we can get lost into adding more information to piling things up in the mind. And that takes us away from where we want to go. Now let's talk about this new subject of the um, corona disease is, and a lot of people are concerned and some people are afraid and worried about it. Um, so to me is that every once in a while, uh, different things starts to pop whether they're man-made or not, whether it's, it's something, a kind of a virus that was created in a laboratory and it's put out or was tested on people or something, it just evolved through evolution and a new virus is created. Uh, whatever is the story, however it comes out, it, and the way I, I look at it is, that I trust life, I trust existence, that whatever happens to me, wherever I go, if it's an accident or an incident, something that's supposed to happen to me, uh, it's inevitable. I can't change my destiny and I can't change what is meant to happen. So in this kind of a mentality, it comes the trust. You come to this place of trusting that some intelligence that we just touch this intelligence by going into this deep meditation. There is a wisdom for in our lives. There is an intelligence that rules the world and runs the show. There's a creator that has created this creation. It has the knows better, knows better than you and I. And in trusting that, in staying in this place, deep place, that we went just right now, a few moments ago into it, that what can really touch this place? What can really disturb this? And when I'm at this place into the center of myself and I'm completely still, present, connected, what has the power to do anything to it? And certainly coronavirus cannot affect this place because this place is beyond anything, beyond any disease, beyond any kind of manifested form or whatever appears in this life and disappears, whatever threat appears and comes up, what can it do to the truth of who I am? 
because the truth of who I am is beyond something that can disturb it. This place we just went into and we all touched it and feel it. It's so deep, so expanded, so radiant that nothing has the power to touch it. And any kind of object, virus, or force, negative dark force comes to light. It, it's just like a spaceship is approaching the planet sun. And as you get closer and closer to the sun, you just melt from the heat of the sun. So what can you do to the sun? It overpowers everything else. And the same thing here, when you come to your own center and you tap into the light which is within yourself, then anything else that comes close to it is, is transformed and forces it to transform it, to dissolve it. It forces it to bow at the presence of light because darkness cannot exist where there is light. So we remember who we are. We come back to the essence and the truth of who we are and the fears and the worries, they disappear. And a lot of this whole thing, first of all, a lot of it is hype. A lot of these man-made fears that they create for manipulation and putting this fear out into the space, into the atmosphere, into the air of scaring us from things. This is nothing new. It's been around. This game has been being played for years and years and years. It's not a new game. Now for me, it's like the moment I was born was set up and written, and the day I'm supposed to die is written. I've had five near-death experiences, and if I was supposed to die, I would have died. Something was supposed to happen to me and make me dismembered, lose something, my eye, my, my hand, my arm, it would have happened. And it will happen. There's nothing in the world I can do to prevent it, to change its course. What's meant to be is going to happen. That's how I've lived my life. And that's how I live my life. So I don't allow fear, which is, I don't allow fear to rule my life. I don't operate from fear. Wisdom is a different thing. Using wisdom, your intelligence available to you to operate with that wisdom and use your common sense, but not fear, not operating from that place. I don't allow that. I don't buy it. And here, for us, the lovers of wisdom, the lovers of God, with having the understanding and the wisdom and the know-how of knowing, recognizing the truth of who you are, that you are light. Whenever you just bring your attention inwards and you touch yourself and you come back to the center of yourself, you are in the full power of the divine self. You have access to all that wisdom, knowledge, and power because you become pure light. So what can do a virus do to the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul? 
It's powerless. It has no power. The power of this virus is in creating fear. This kind of virus has been around. People can always die from something. Of course people die from different things. People die every day from accidents, from cancer, from more people die from mistakes that happen in hospitals. Then you're, you're in a clinic, you're in a hospital, you're being hospitalized, and chances that something can happen to you there and something can go wrong is more than if you're at home. So, or you're driving, you're traffic, especially in bu busy cities, you're riding a motorcycle or things like that. Um, don't allow media to paralyze you and create all these kind of anxiety and fear in, in your heart and worry you from connecting to other people, from reaching out to other people, from doing what you love to do traveling or whatever that you you enjoy doing because of this or that use your wisdom use your intelligence and operate from that place And also for the spiritually advanced, the one that is doing the work, the recognition that nothing is separated from who you are. A virus is not separated from who we are. It's an aspect of who we are. If I'm to get sick and go through an illness, there is something for me to experience and to learn to that. Of course, it's not something I'm welcoming and want to happen, but things do happen. And there's always something to learn from it. So I don't see this virus separated from me. I don't see it of something came from another dimension. It's an aspect, an expression of my own self. Like everything else is an ex an aspect and impression of myself, the good and the bad. But thank God we have each other. Thank God we have access to this information. Thank God that at any time, any moment, we divert our attention inwards and we sink inside ourselves. We come back to the, the truth of who we are. We come back to our power. You experience and you see for yourself who you are, that you're light. You see your own power. You see the power that is here, available to you.
and then the fear and worry and anxiety disappear. Every time there's a major shift coming, a major transformation is happening, which we're in the midst of it, of we're expanding and a part of the humanity consciousness is rising its vibrations and you're, you're doing the work on yourself. Sorry, there's, I have to mute everybody. And we're, as the more you do the work, the more you're not paying attention to the noise. And again, we've talked about this so many times but whether it's inner noise or other noise, the other noise is the media, what is going on there, and the fears of other people, whatever is their fear, that they wanna project it on you, they wanna transfer it on you. But you come to the world of meditation, you have come to, you somehow, you have brought into this path. You have become a sadhu, you're a sannyasin, you're a Sufi, you're a shaman. And in your destiny, in your life, you have chosen the path of liberation. Liberation is your goal. You want to awaken. You want to reach the ultimate understanding. You want to become one with God. You want to live in light. You want to reach ultimate inner peace and happiness. That's what we want. And that means to go to different layers of fear and worry and anxiety. And some of these things, they're right in your face. They're real. Maybe you meet people who are dying from a disease and it's happening around you. But how are you going to elevate and reach a higher level of consciousness if you're not challenged. How are you gonna graduate from this third dimensional world and reach your consciousness to the 5D, enter into the unified field of oneness? If you're going to stay involved in the world of fear and worry and anxiety, fear means that there is separation. So at one point, 
on this path we have of what we're doing is we have to go through this thing. We have to walk through this fog, this stuff that starts to appear in front of you and it's really scary and it's really weird. Whatever that is, you're going through a divorce, you're going through a financial crisis, you are going through, you're living in a country that there's a revolution is happening, there's a war going on, you know, really stuff that they really shake, shake you or shakes your foundation and it's right in your face. And And that's, those are, these are the moments that it prove, prove to you that if you can transcend and go beyond this through tabbing into what you've learned from your teachers, what you've learned from your guides, or tabbing into the center of yourself and really staying still in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of the fires and earthquakes and hurricanes, you are sannyasin. You are tapping into the wisdom, your ancient wisdom, and all your training of meditation and all the workshops you've taken all the work that you've done all these years of doing inner work it's being it's here to be applied practically in the moments of chaos and time to show what you got and walk into the fear and anxieties of yourself to see that there is nothing there. It's illusion. It can't touch who you are. Maybe it's going to touch the physical body, but it can't touch who you are. It will aggravate the mind. There is a lot of noise out there. You got to go back inside to this place and be center and quiet and disregard the noise. There's always going to be noise, always. Fears, worries. I think you're going to have a world which is harmonious and everything is going to be fine and going according to the way you like it. Are you wrong? Because it's never going to be that. It's never been that and it would never be that. That which we're looking for is inside ourselves. We have to find it within ourselves. And then the other world will adjust itself to the state of your being. You find harmony inside yourself first. That's where it is. And a part of the test and the challenge is that you have to practically demonstrate to existence that you are ready and you graduate and you can be in this place. So then your vibration starts to rise. You're vibrating to a higher frequency to enter fifth dimension, to enter to have access to the fifth dimensional part of yourself. 
by raising your vibrations. But as you're raising your vibrations, you have to go through the cloud in order, let's say you have a big cloudy, uh, foggy field and you rise, you know, you have an airplane or a helicopter is rising above it. You have to rise above the cloud. So in order to come to clarity, and the same thing. You got to demonstrate that you're worthy by practically going through your fears and anxieties and concerns by staying completely connected at all times to the center of yourself. And that's why we do this work. That's why we come together. That's what satsang is about. It's the association of the monks on the path, association of coming the lovers of the truth, coming together in satsang to sit together. And by using the power of collective to come back into the center, to remember who we are and to, to have this affirmation of who we are. And that's why we have spiritual centers, spiritual groups. Otherwise, the other world, the media is not gonna give this to you. They're gonna stir up the pot all the time with something else. Today is Corona disease, tomorrow, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, they came with AIDS and they stirred up the pot with AIDS, and then now they're coming up with this, and then they're gonna come up with 5G technology. There's always going to be something. It's never gonna end. So you can't look for peace in the other world because you're not gonna get it. You have to find it inside yourself. And to find it inside yourself, you have to do the work. You have to be attentive. You can't just be in the illusion and asleep. You have to just wake up to the truth of who you are. And then as you do this, your vibration starts to rise. You come, you elevate above the fog, about the bullshit, about the stuff. You can see it from where you're at. You can see like this is blah, blah, blah. This is the world. This is the world of fear and anxiety and jealousy and competition of anger and separation. You can see it. You come up here, you see the shit, but you have elevated above it and it's not touching you anymore. There's no other way. There's no other way. Just one moment, my uh, Instagram ended, so I'm gonna have to, forgive me, I'm gonna have to redo it again. Get this thing going. All right, all right. Anybody has any questions for me? Okay, well. Okay, let me check. This message. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Oh, Lynn, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Sarostra. Yeah, hello. Hi, nice to talk hello. to you. It's not so easy to see me because I am laying on my sofa. 
That that's fine. It's okay. okay. I see your yeah. take. So that's good. Yeah. So, yes, nice, nice to see you, and then very nice to 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 join your webinar. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad you're able to do it, and. Um, you know, you know, we have vacation here in, in Norway now. You it's, have uh, it's what? winter. It, we have vacation. It's winter uh, vacation. Okay, right now it's winter vacation. Okay. So I have yes, I'm free from work. So. Mm -mm. Okay. I get Only it. relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need it. it it's, yeah. I, 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 I relax. I think that's good for me and uh, listen to, to uh, videos and webinars and it's very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy that you're sharing and we all need to be reminded to come back to our center. Mm. And, uh, and I believe you, you were with us when we were doing our meditation, right? Yes, yes, I was. Did you go to a deep uh, spate of silence and quiet mm. place? Yes. Right. I, I try to do it every morning. Right. So when you I, come to this, go ahead. Yeah, but, but, but usually I, I use it during the day, but uh, I, I take uh, 10 or 20 minutes every morning before right. I dress. And, uh, because I, I think it's very good for me. To start the day uh, very calm and quiet. Yes, inside. exactly, exactly. Especially when you start it, you start your day by getting centered. It's like rechecking yes. back, and then you operate from this place throughout the day. Mm. And if something happens, disturbs you, or whatever, which there's always something that's going to happen, mm. you check back and you come back to the center by bringing your attention to the center mm. and as you bring your attention back to your center you see how quiet it is it just you come back to this place and everything comes down everything gets quiet Uh, Sky, hi Sky, I'm going to unmute mute you and we can have a chat. Hi Sky. Hi everyone. Sky. Yeah, hi, hello, nice, nice to see you, thanks. Nice to have you with us. Yeah, I missed the meditation, but I got the tail end of it. Uh, I just, I went for a run. But okay. I just wanted to talk a little bit about fear and worry. And okay. so I've, I've been able to feel the stillness and to feel that, you know, that I'm, you know, part of all that is and, and the awareness, you know, the, whatever, the observer consciousness, but in the moment, I, I still am working through a bunch of irrational fears that come up and they, they catch me a bit off guard. If I'm doing a little project, uh, like the other day I was doing a project and I felt, well, I ordered the wrong rock for a, a project I was doing. Anyway, it goes into like a lot of self incrimination and, and feeling like I've done something wrong and there's going to be a terrible, right. you know, punishment. So a lot of inner, and I've been working for years on this and a lot of inner um, attacks happen kind of spontaneously. And I did have some things in my childhood that could contribute to that. And so I, I do active therapy on it, but I'm open to any suggestions you have on working through you know, the irrational fears that come up. Right. Yeah. So when the fear rises for you, right? So there is a, there, there is a part of you that is aware of it, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So 
even though that you fall into it and you get entangled in this in, internal battle, this talk, this thing that is happening, whatever we want to name it. But there is still an awareness of its happening. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So, and consequently, right now you're bringing it up because the awareness is not touched. So, when this is happening, this internal battle is happening, which one are you? Are you the internal noises or you're the awareness of the internal noises? It feels like a lot of times I identify with the victim. I identify partially with the one that's attacking and then partially with the one that's feeling like it's getting attacked. And then between the two, it's, yeah, it's a mess. And then right. to right. step back into the awareness, um, yeah, it just depends on how stirred up I get. Sometimes it can take the rest of the day to get back into it. Right, right, right. So sometimes it takes a whole day of mind boggling before you come back to your center. So, and then when you come back to the center, then is the center disturbed? No. No. The center remains the center, right? Right. So what can it can it do to you? Okay, hold on. You're in a very good place. I'm really happy we're talking about this. I really appreciate it. There is an awareness, there is a seer, there is a, there is a witness. Something greater inside is present. It's like this. Check this out. And these things are happening in front of it. And there is something is right here. This part is not having any judgments. It doesn't care. It's simply aware of an internal battle. It's simply aware of a mind that is going crazy and is chattering like, you idiot, you ordered the wrong thing. How many times you can do this? You're stupid. You never get it. You always do this and you because you have these problems and blah, 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 blah. You're hearing the chatter. So the chatter is appearing to a greater intelligence that doesn't have a judgment. It's simply aware of noises happening. So what you want to do is simply bringing your attention to this other part of yourself effortlessly by by bringing your attention to the part which is aware of the chatter but not the content of the chatter right so every time you bring your attention to this part then you recognize the truth of who you are. It's similar, similar to the blue sky. Where do you live? Where, what part of the world do you live? Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay, so you have a lot of nice sunny days. And, and, unless there's this, the rainy season, correct? Yeah. <laughs> So you, you, okay, so you, the, the blue sky, you have this beautiful blue sky, and then there's clouds come and the rainy season starts, or really a nasty dark cloud comes and it dumps and it's really raining like crazy. And, and then what happens? It does its thing for half an hour, an hour or two, and then 
what happens after? The storm goes away, correct? Correct. Yeah, it doesn't stay there all the time. So it rises, it happens, and then it goes away. And then when it goes away, what do you see when you're looking up in the, in the assuming it's daytime and you're looking up in the sky after the storm goes away, what do you see? Blue sky. Blue sky. So how many times, how many of these storms throughout the time you lived in Hawaii have you seen? Hundreds. 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 Has ever any of them been able to affect the color of sky? Does the sky no. ever say, oh, my feelings are hurt. I'm not going to be blue anymore. I'll be pink. Or you, you, because all these storms come and I have childhood traumas, now there is some kind of scratches on the sky. Does it? <laughs> so the storm comes, it does its thing, and then it goes away, and the blue sky remains the blue sky. Exactly the same thing is what's going on here. You're, by bringing your attention on this other part of yourself, the real part of yourself, who is the witness, the one that is aware of this storm. The storm starts to happen and your mind is going crazy. Most Just people, ask who is aware. And I've, and I've practiced that before when things come up shift into this awareness like what is aware of all of this right now and um it feels like i i have feels like sometimes i get uh uncentered and focused a lot on what other people think and feel and how they're going to react and how they're gonna see me or see the situation instead of like honoring how I feel and um, like that I actually deserve to feel good and that I deserve to, uh, to even, you know, shift into the awareness instead of be being uh, beat up right. on the inside. Well, it's, first of all, what you're sharing with us is you're not the only one. A lot of people go through this. And so this is very courageous of you. I admire you to openly share your concerns and your struggle. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is very normal. It happens to a lot of people. And so this is how you deal with it. Um, most of us are gonna go take different workshops and different practices, various practices of finding a way to overcome these emotions. And then we start working on, on our childhood issues and trying to fix different things. The problem is that we're trying, it, it doesn't get fixed. We're, tr we're resisting what appears, what shows up, like resisting a storm is, I have no power in manipulating a storm. I can't just snap my finger and do something that the storm disappears. And the more I resist the storm, the storm doesn't give a shit. The storm is going to do its thing. I will suffer because I'm resisting what is happening right now. So instead of if I shift myself and come back into this place of simply acknowledging that a storm is happening, 
there's a nasty storm and it's really dark and it's raining or hail or, or snow is coming. And I'm simply in this place of acknowledging it. That's all I'm doing. I'm acknowledging its presence. It's here. And this is my suggestion to you, my brother, is next time this is happening, this is not positive visualization. This is not some system of uh, thinking positive, anything like that. This is simply an acknowledgement of an internal turmoil is happening and you simply acknowledging that it's here of I'm blaming myself or I'm struggling with myself or my mind is here and it's mind boggling is happening. You simply acknowledge its presence that it's here, whatever the story is. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling uh, dumb. I feel stupid. I feel da 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 da. This thing is happening and you, you just acknowledge it with all the feelings that what do people think about me, um, whatever, all of it is welcome to be here. You welcome it because it's here. You simply acknowledge its presence. It's here, this drama, this internal mind boggling is here, it's visiting me. That's it, it's a visiting. Nothing else. You just stay at this place. You don't try to detach yourself from it. You don't try anything because the moment you try to do something, it creates an identification that you are a part of this. By simply acknowledging its presence, the storm has come. It's really big. It's overwhelming. It's overpowering you. There's nothing you can do when this thing comes. The only thing you do is you acknowledge its presence and you allow it to do whatever it does. And it will may take over your, your mind and you may just go to this thing, ah, it's driving you crazy. But the moment you acknowledge its presence that it's here, a very tiny crack has happened there's a separation takes place between you and this thing. And the separation is this, that you're the witness here, witnessing of the storm, but you're not the storm. Yet you're affected by the storm, of course, but you're not the storm. And the same thing here this mind boggling thing, whatever internal process is happening, when you simply acknowledging it's here, that means you're not it, you're the awareness of it. And what happens is as you do this practice, and you wanna do this practice with times that things are happy, like let's say something happened to you and you feel really, really happy, and you say, happiness is here. Happiness is visiting me. Then maybe you have a, you know, your girlfriend does something or your friend does something and you, there's a moment that you get jealous or contraction happens. You do the same thing. You say, jealousy is here. Jealousy is visiting me. And you start doing this with throughout the day or throughout the week, every time you remember. You can do it with good stuff, you can do it with bad stuff. And what happens is slowly, 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 you get separated from it. And the more you do it, the more you remember that you're the awareness of this event, you're not the event. And it has no power over the awareness because the awareness remains the awareness. It's the same awareness 
when you were five years old, yeah, it was aware. When you went through your puberty, you're 12, 13 years old, and your body is changing, there's something, there's a sense of I am, there's an observer, something is aware of this change. And then you're getting, you know, for me is now I'm 17, 18 years old, my agenda changed. Now I'm drinking and chasing girls and going to the parties and there's an awareness of what I'm doing. Then I'm getting a little bit older. I want to go to college and go to another country. And I want to become an athlete, da, 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 all these things. There's an awareness, is aware of it. Then I'm just in my 30s. I'm reading like books from Osho. I'm doing meditation. There's something here in common that never changed the sense of I am, the awareness, something is aware, and here the same thing. In the midst of this chaos of craziness, of internal battle that you have with yourself, there is something is aware of it. And that quality of awareness does not change. Something doesn't change throughout these ups and downs. It's the same thing that right now is aware that everything is calm. And it's the same thing is aware that everything is chaotic. You, are you, you, you understand? Yeah, I read, a, I read a book called When Awareness Becomes Natural by Tejaniya and he, had a he basically prescribes that same principle that everything is an object appearing to awareness even people events and anything that you can possibly be aware of is uh, is just another object appearing to awareness and nothing ever stays it just arises and then and then disappears and then something else appears and when I read that, I just, I had like a belief system come in that, uh, that that was too cold or that's like not like lovey, loving and because he basically, you know, said that, and, and, and I know that it's true. It's just, I have some resistance to like really adopting that everything is neutral you know that it, like you said the the storm it doesn't care it doesn't care what anyone thinks there's there's reality and there's everything that's happening is neutral and then we put meaning on it and so mo mostly what i'm saying is i've heard two different teachings one where and and i and I can experience the neutrality of things in the awareness that when you're in that still space, then, then it's just, you know, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be positive and there's always going to be negative and you can focus on whatever and it doesn't really matter and except for to you. And then, so. I'll, okay. I'll just apply it more i know i just need to apply it and and practice and develop the 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 mental or the emotional or the awareness discipline i don't know if you call it a discipline it's just develop the habit of shifting into an awareness perspective instead of identifying with everything that's happening identifying with the objects yeah, all you do between this week and next week, let's meet next week, and between now and then, make a habit of whenever you remember, and if you don't remember, you don't need to beat yourself up. But normally we, so something rises, frustration, let's say you, have, you get frustrated with your son or with your partner, whatever, frustration rises, you make this habit, you say frustration is here, 
frustration is visiting me. Rather than using the words, I'm frustrated. Yeah. When you say, I'm frustrated, then you are that thing. And when you say frustration is here, you're already announcing it to yourself that you know who you are, that you're the awareness of the frustration. Frustration is here. Is this noise coming from back on from your house? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I so, can. yeah, no problem. Um, I just wasn't sure if we have someone else unmuted and that's where it's coming from. Um, yeah. This is it. Yeah. So you, the moment that you are saying that something is visiting you, you're making an announcement that you are, you are awareness. You're the witness of something here. So you're not that thing. You cannot be, you cannot be that thing if you're acknowledging its presence and you become that thing when consciousness awareness is not there. So if I, if I, if I don't acknowledge it and I say, I'm really frustrated, I'm very angry, I'm really sad, I'm really da 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 da, so I am that thing. But if I say it's here visiting me, a separation has happened, means I'm acknowledging my original state, which I'm simply aware of it, but I'm not it. And then it loses its power, it has no power, and it's gone. So, they reported their first cases of the virus. The president is planning his information about the virus at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Sorry. Um, try that for one week and let's talk next week and see it takes sometimes it's very subtle, but the shift will happen. I've never shared this with anyone who's tried it and they have not li liberated themselves. It works. So, but it, the change shift may be subtle, but it does work because it's the truth of who you are. You are not this person. You're not this thing that happens. If you were, you wouldn't be able to know it. If I was the chaos in my mind, I would have never known that because that would be the only reality I have. So I have to be separated from the chaos that I'm noticing there is a chaos. There's a duality happening in you and you're aware of it. So you cannot be that thing. All right, okay. So let's see. I will report back next week. That would be great. Yeah, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. Okay, I'm looking at some of work. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your sharing. I appreciate it. I looked at it, all of you. I'm just not going to bring every single name, but I'm grateful for it. Um, we're going to have our next uh, academy next Wednesday, uh, same time. Um, if you want to reach out, you're welcome to reach out via the um, our academy page on Facebook. You can always contact me uh, uh, by email or uh, through our website. Our website is zaratustra.tv. Um, a couple of announcements. I 
have put out our my uh, new CD meditation CD that I finished it with Baram G. And now we do have it on a digital uh, format. I know some of you have been waiting uh, to purchase it because before I only had it on a CD and now I have it on a digital format. So if, if you are still looking for it, feel free to go on my website, zaratustra.tv and you have access to uh, uh, the CD. It's called, You Are Who You're Looking For. And um, I haven't put it on a Facebook yet, but I'm gonna put it all over in the next day or two. There's been a lot going on. We had so many different events and we're kind of taking a little breather uh, from all these events we've been participating. It's been nonstop full on. And of course, I'm getting ready uh, to go on a two month tour to Europe. So we're also preparing for the European tour. Um, I will be heading to Norway and uh, the first week of this European tour, it's going to be in Hamar, Norway. You can contact me directly or contact my sister Hilde if you have any questions and you need some information as far as where to stay or uh, what to do, uh, feel free to reach out uh, to us. I'm uh, offering three, diff three different events uh, in Hamar. I'm going to start with a shamanic healing circle. Then we have a two and a half day workshop. It's called From Suffering to Super Consciousness. Actually, this is the first time I'm um, doing this workshop, so I'm excited about it. And then at the end, we're going to have a third eye activation uh, evening um, in Hamar before I head out to Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I'm sorry, just one moment. Somebody just wrote to me. I called you to make an appointment, but I never. Uh, hi, um, hi, D-Light. Um, okay, I, um, Amir, if you can copy, Amir, are you there? Let me see. Um, sorry, I. you may have contacted us. I did not get an uh uh, Amir? Hello, Amir? Amir is not there. Delight, can, uh, can you uh, call me again or send me a text message and I'll get back with you. I'm sorry if we missed, missed it, getting back to you. Um, normally, we're very good in getting back. Oh, Elizabeth, I believe. Uh, normally, we're very good to get back to people, but this past couple of weeks has been really full on and it's been very overwhelming with a lot of different projects that we've had. So if we didn't get back to you, I apologize. Um, also, I wanted to share with you that uh, I still have one spot left for my um, private mentorship program. This program is a one-on-one -on -one basis that I decided to offer it this year for um, your personal development. And in this program, we will meet up uh, and go over your concerns and issues and see what is your specific spiritual goal. And I will be designing a um, um, tailor-made program for you, whatever your goals are and I'll, I'll walk you through it. We will be meeting uh, three times a month for an hour and a half each time. There's gonna be 12 different times that we meet. Uh, in addition to that, we'll have a full day together. And that's, you have to come to me for that, whatever I'm gonna be, whether it's gonna be in Europe or it's going to be in Los Angeles. And a part of your program is that you uh, can come to the 5D Quantum Healing Training Program in Sweden, which is going to uh, be a 10-day retreat, and that's going to be at the end of June and July. And uh, so all of it is a part of the same package. 
if you're interested, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can write to me at info at zarathustra.tv and uh, we'll make an appointment and we get together and we talk about things and we move on from there. <sighs> it's nice to see you all. <laughs> I uh, was looking forward to our academy. I'm kind of uh, feel um, it's last night I was excited. It's like a little kid being really excited about uh, getting together and connecting with each other. And uh, I was like missing you all. And uh, I love it when um, at this point in my work that um, it's really a joy to connect with you and to receive all this love and to be in this position that this love affair has taken place in between all of us. So I'm very grateful for being in this situation in my life that I can experience this with you. I want you to know that, that this, this love affair is mutual. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for your love and uh, feel free to reach out. Namaste.